ready to get it started? Yep. So a little bit of background about Tippin for those of you who don't know, is that for over 80 years, Tiffin has been working in the photography and filming industry, creating products that help creators make the world's greatest images. As a part of Tiffin's mission, education is key. So today we brought in a dear friend, Kofi Ewa, to talk about lighting, as lighting can be the difference between a good and a great image. On that note, I'd like to introduce everyone, Kofi. Kofi Ewa is also known as at KY the Creative. He is a Toronto-based creator and cinematographer who specializes in the fitness industry content. He's worked with some of the largest fitness brands, including brands like Gymshark, as well as various well-known social media influencers within the fitness industry space. So Kofi, uh, before I turn it over to you and we get this started, I would love to ask you a couple questions, if that's good with you. Yeah, that's fine. Awesome. Can you tell me a little bit about where you're from? Uh, sure. So uh, if you guys don't know Toronto very well, I was actually born in a city just outside of it called Mississauga. And um, hang on one second. I think this thing showed up on me. Um, so I was born in Mississauga, just outside of Toronto. I went to school at the University of Guelph, where I was actually in business school, which has very little to do with cinematography. And then sooner or like a little bit after graduating, uh, I unfortunately had lost my job, but I did have a camera as a grad gift from when I graduated school. And I figured, well, if you are starting kind of from not having money, then you may as well start something that you really don't make a lot to begin with. So I started doing a lot of photography, quickly realized that video is kind of the way of the future, started teaching myself how to shoot video, how to make videos. And the same thing that goes for a lot of you guys that are freelancers or solo operators where one video snowballs into another and you start working with bigger names or bigger brands. And uh, now we're here shooting a lighting seminar for you guys. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kofi. Do you have a couple more questions? Um, can you tell me how long you've been into photography and content creation? And, you know, tell us how it turned into a profession for you. Sure. So I started, I want to say, like, the very bottom of 2018. So I would comfortably say, like, four, four years now-ish. Um, I kind of started around that, like, late 2018 when I kind of decided, well, I'm going to start doing it freelancing a little bit. I was working at a camera store for a while. And what ended up happening was the freelance gigs were outweighing what I was getting paid at work. Uh, and then by the end of 2019, which was a couple months after I'd really started getting going, uh, that's when I decided that I was going to pursue it full time just to utilize the extra hours that I would have been working at a traditional job anyway. Um, but yeah, started off with one spec project and it led to another. And uh, now we're here. Awesome. And then can you tell us a little bit about, you know, what you're going to be showing us today and a little brief breakthrough before? Sure, so this is actually going to be three different scenarios that you would use the two Tiffin lights, the Blender Ego and the Blender XL. Now, what I like about these lights, because I'm a solo operator, it's run and gun, and with fitness style videos, you're not really, you don't have a chance to have a big crew or a big setup, so these fixtures come in, these fixtures come in handy a lot, so it makes things a bit easier for you run and gun filmmakers or solo operators. So we're gonna go through our interview setup, how I would set it up for things like promo videos, and as well as product photography at the end. So uh, each video is gonna kind of have an introduction as to the setup, but then we're also gonna have a Q and A where you could ask more specific questions after, uh, because I wish I could answer everything in a minute and a half each, but I really don't know if I can. Awesome, thanks so much. So now we're gonna jump into the first video and we'll get it rolling. Perfect. What's going on guys, it's Kofi Abo, and today we're gonna to be talking about a lighting kit made by Tiffin and the Lowell Ego and the Lowell Blender XL. Now these two are very interesting lights. They have a small footprint, but they do come in handy and they do work for your run and gun lighting scenarios. Now it does have a 5 8 thread at the bottom of the light so you could mount it onto C stands and other lighting stands as well. It's also bicolor and dimmable too. So not only are you gonna be able to get a nice output out of this small light fixture, but at the same time with your normal filmmaking lighting stands and C stands, this is going to work perfect. And it fits nicely into bags such as your Nanit case or any of your carrying cases if you are traveling when you're bringing your lighting with you. Now on the other side, the Blender XL is a smaller lighting fixture, but it does have a double diffusion panel in it for a nice soft light in a small package. It also has an adjustable beam angle and it's also bicolor and dimmable just like the Ego is as well. Now a cool feature about the Blender XL is you actually have a DTAP cable in the package so you're able to hook this up to V-mount batteries if you need external power and you can't hook up to a wall. Now in today's video we're actually going to be going through three setups that we can use using this run and gun lighting setup and with me today I have one Blender Ego and two Blender XLs and we're going to go through the various situations that you would use these guys. 
now this looks like your normal overpriced toronto apartment and to be honest you're pretty right but it's also going to be our first lighting setup and that is the interview lighting setup this one of the most common three-point lighting setups that you're going to find in your cinematography career starting off with our key light now we are in a room with a lot of natural light and a big window from the actual balcony however we're going to use a key light just to give more wrap around the face And the second light is going to be your fill light and this is going to be the light that's going to fill in any of the shadows that your key light actually makes now the loa ego is a little bit of a smaller more compact light so you're not going to get quite the spread as you would on a bigger softbox which means a fill light will come in handy with making sure that everything is evenly lit and lastly just to separate our subject from the background we're going to use a rim light which is going to be another blender xl as well now what you're going to do is adjust the white balance knobs on the back and your brightness to make sure that your key light is the brightest light out of the three and the rest of your lights are pretty decently white balanced to make sure that you don't have any off-putting color Now for our second lighting setup, this is going to be for things like promotional videos. So we actually brought over a yoga instructor, Katie's over here, and she's going through a couple of yoga moves, but also incorporating the tip and lights just to tell the story about the idea that content creators nowadays, it's a little bit harder to make content, but using something like lighting setups is a great way to separate yourself from the pack and have higher quality images. Okay, so for the next lighting setup, it's going to work if you want to make small form commercials or maybe you're doing ads for social media. And this is a lighting setup where the Blender XL and the Ego work really well together in our second lighting setup. So for a key light, once again, we're going to be using the Blender Ego light. Now, one of the techniques you want to use when you have windows in your scenario is making sure that you're lighting from the window that you can't see. So right across here, we have a window on this side, but the way that I'm setting up this light is it's in a corner where you actually can't see the light in frame. This is called motivated lighting. So when I put this light over here, right by Katie's face, what ends up happening is that it looks like that that window light is wrapping around to one other side of her face. Now we're gonna be using something like the Blender XL light to fill in the shadows, just like we did in our previous interview. But the way that you wanna do this is you actually wanna put this at a slightly lower power than your key light. That makes sure that you have the proper contrast ratio, increasing your depth and making your images look more cinematic. So for our last light, instead of using it as a rim light, we're actually going to be bouncing this Blender XL off of the wall. Now, this is a smaller light. It's a little bit harsher, but it does have a lot of power. And I found in my initial shot that the back wall actually looked a little bit dark as it was in my frame. So I used a third light like the Blender XL. And instead of using it as a rim light, which would keep the wall really dark, I actually bounced it off that white wall. But it keeps that wall nice and bright to match the rest of our scene. Awesome, Kofi. And now I'm going to pass it back on over to you. Sure. So basically those two lighting setups are very similar where you're basically using three point lighting to do three things. One, you want to key your subject. Two, you want to take away some of the unwanted shadows using a second light. And three, you want to separate things from the background. Now, in the first interview lighting setup, that's your basic three point lighting. And it works really handy with this small package and a small footprint because you could set those pretty because you could set those things up pretty easily where right now I'm actually using the logo ego right here and that's keying on my face giving me some light even though I have a window at the back here so it looks like the light from over here is lighting up my face and also I have a rim light back here which is going to be another blender xl which is giving me a little bit of separation from the background now because it's bright it's daylight outside and the windows in the front are open I don't have a fill light but if you're in a situation where you want to make sure things look evenly lit for corporate videos or interviews, or maybe you're doing small form documentary where you have to be quick, that's where that setup works really well. Um, what's also cool about these lights is that because you have the bicolor at the back, you can mix and match your lighting setup temperature to match whatever the ambient light is. So sometimes you're not in a situation where I am right now and I'm in a condo with big white walls and you got to adjust that white balance. You have those knobs at the back and it's dimmable too, which you don't see in a lot of smaller lighting setups. Um, the second thing is going to be for your promotional videos and that one was and that one's a little bit difficult because you're in a big white room and we didn't really show a before of that which I apologize for but it would look a lot like the before in the interview setup where yes you have some natural light from outside coming in but the back wall was super super dark so it didn't make a lot of sense and doing things like bouncing light off a wall helps bring the levels up in the entire scene to make sure that things look the way that you want them to. Um, but yeah, we use the same setup essentially in all three parts, except for that one rim light was now a bounce light off of the wall. And uh, Danielle, I'll throw it back to you because I'm sure I have a ton of questions. Uh, actually, yes, we already have some audience questions rolling in. So perfect timing. I'll brace um, myself. I'll start up with the first one here. 
So the first question from one of our audience members is, are the lights easy to work with and do they easily fit into your kit? Yeah, actually what I like about both of these lights is one, like, I wonder if I could take one out, hang on. Like this is my other, this is my other Blender XL. And this thing is about when you fold it down, it's about the size of my hand. So if you have like a Nana case or any like a Pelican or something, you could just put this into a little slot in the side. And then with the Ego, it actually breaks down like a tent. So you could take the top and bottoms off and the actual softbox part of it flattens. So you could slide that rack in. The, if you have a backpack that's big enough or even like just a flatter bag that could hold kind of a one and a half by one and a half square, you could fit those two lights in there too. I think that was it. I think I answered the question. Awesome. <laughs> oh no we have more so okay. i'm gonna go to the next one on that note so the second question that we had come in so far is is the color temperature of the lowell ego led adjustable yes so i believe it's 27 to 66 uh you could double check on their website to make sure uh, i don't know the exact numbers but i do know i can get like a really cool balance light and i can also get some really bright tungsten color as well now in the interview setups when you're dealing with people's faces i will add uh, you could cheat it a little bit. You could actually make your skin tone a little bit warmer by adding a little bit of warmth on your white balance just to retain that skin tone because most skin tones are going to fall on that orange. So if you want to make things look a little bit better and have your skin tones pop a little bit, don't go crazy with it, but you can adjust your white balance a little bit higher uh, with the temperature on one of your lights, especially your key light too. Hey, thanks for sharing. So we'll go with another one from the audience member. Is the diffusion on the Blender XL removable? Yes, so the Blender XL, you just have to take the top of it here. This part moves, there's a little dial on here, and you just pull one of these guys out. Now, the cool thing is there's two of them, so you can just take out the second one by moving this dial a little bit farther, and then you have both of these diffusion panels, and then you have the light. Awesome, thank you for showing us that. So a question that just came in is, does the color temperature of the Lowell Ego LED light work better with the Blender XL? Wait, sorry, repeat that one again. Does the color temperature of the Lowell Ego LED light work better with the Blender XL? I think it like it works, like that's kind of a weird question because like the color temperature is kind of, is linear, right? So you can match the two of them together. There isn't a, uh, there's not like a screen or anything that puts them right at the back. So you'll have to go by eye a little bit, but you can get these two lights to match very well with each other, right? So when I'm putting the Lowell Ego into say a cooler white balance and I put the Blender XL into one, it actually matches pretty well. So you're not gonna notice a giant difference between the two. And in the product photo setup, uh, you can you can start to see that as well. We're actually on purpose. I made one warmer than the other, and they complemented each other really well. Okay, great. So I'm going to jump to our third video right now. Okay, so we're back in the apartment, and we're going to get into our third and our final lighting setup, and that's actually going to be product photography. So if you're somebody that does product photos, maybe for a sponsor, maybe for your YouTube thumbnails, this lighting setup is going to come handy, especially if you're doing product-based photography. Now, again, for this lighting setup, we're going to be using two lights, the Ego and the Blender XL once again, with the Ego being our key light, which is pretty much the common theme for this video, and also using the Blender light to give us a little bit of fill for those shadows, just like in our other two setup. Now, for context, I will be shooting this on the Sony a7 IV with a 35 millimeter G Master lens. Now that doesn't mean that this is the setup you need to have to get good photos, but if you use this lighting technique, you can even get really high quality photos out of an iPhone like this one. So what you're gonna notice here is without any sort of lights, especially if you're doing product video, it's gonna be pretty dark. And this is where we're gonna bring in our key light, which is the Lowell Ego. But you could tell that there's that shadow that falls off on the side and it doesn't really show all the details of the product you're trying to show off. So that's where you'd have a fill light just like the Blender XL. And I actually made this light a little bit warmer just so it pops off the background a little bit. And in the next couple seconds, I'm gonna actually show you what the photography versions look like of that. I'll toss it back over to you. Sure. When you're shooting from the light of the window you can't see, make sure that you're shooting the opposite side of your key light. So generally speaking, what I do is I make an invisible line. So for example, my key light's over here, and I don't necessarily want to shoot into my key light. I want to shoot away from it. 
So if I make a line straight down my face, I'm probably gonna go right about over here. Now, you could actually call that something called the 180 degree rule where you're 180 degrees from where the key light is. And I wish I explained that a little bit better, but you guys will have questions later. But the photography and the product photo side of things is something that isn't lost or dead in social media. I know a lot of you guys are posting on Instagram or posting reels, and this works in either direction. Now, again, we're using the low ego light because it's a big key. It's bigger actually than the products that we have. So if you wanna have a small product in your frame, then using something like a lot, sorry, using something like the low ego is a great way to do that because it's much larger and will give you that coverage. Now, what happens when you have a key light, but you have nothing to fill in the shadows, especially something like a cube, like the red Komodo is, what ends up happening is that it's really bright and detailed and nice on one side, and then it kind of fades off in the back and it doesn't look so great, or there's just things left to be desired. So using a fill light like the Blender XL is great in terms of filling in those shadows, just like you would in something like the interview scene, except your subject, instead of being a person, is actually going to be a product. Now, I did use two different color temperatures where the Ego was a little bit more of a neutral and a little bit cooler. And then I did use a little bit more orange and a little bit more warmth and the fill light on the side just to vary things up, just to mix it up and give you a more dynamic shot. Now it's not entirely drastic, but uh, you could tell the difference if you look at those pictures. And if you guys wanna see them up close uh, or if you wanna use the raw photos and play with them yourself, just let me know. And uh, that's pretty much the answer to that question, I think. Great. Do you want to take some Q&A from the audience? Because we have definitely some questions lined up for you based off that one. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So one of the questions that just came in is, do you personally shoot any commercials? And if so, uh, would you use the Blender XL if that works for it? Yes. So one of the bigger projects I did was I was working in California for Gymshark, actually. And uh, there's a couple other projects going forward. I'm actually going to California next week. Uh, from from Toronto to do some some other stuff. And uh, especially with doing things that are like product based, the Ego and the Blender XL work really well. But what I like about these lights is because they're not gigantic fixtures. So you don't necessarily need to turn off all the lights in a room. Like if you're in a room much like this, where there is a little bit of natural light, there is a bit of space, but you just want control over lighting the subject, then this is where I would use these guys because you don't need them to be super big because there's already some ambient and natural light. You just want a little bit more control and a little bit more wraparound. Awesome. And another question that just came in is, do you have any tips for someone who is just beginning to shoot product shots? Yeah, so I would say start with smaller projects, so that's products. Uh, those ones are a little bit easier to light, they're easier to get backdrops for. In fact, like the backdrop I used for the Red Komodo, and I'll show you guys, it wasn't even an actual backdrop, it was just, a file folder that I keep all my receipts in and I just stuck two of them together. And then you can get things kind of lost in the depth of field and you could kind of fudge things into looking like certain backgrounds that are much less expensive. But with smaller products, it's easier to find all the accessories that you need to actually have a successful shoot. Um, how do you get started? Honestly, I would reach out to companies and stuff that you already love uh, even going as far as buying some of the products that they have to offer and then using your lighting techniques and using your photography, taking those pictures and practicing on them. And if you want to go a step further, even just reaching back out to them and saying like, hey, I made some photos of your product. If you like them, you can do whatever. And you never know if that turns into a relationship that actually helps you out later on. Okay, awesome. And then another one that we just had roll in, and is the Blender XL a harder light than the Ego? Sometimes I hear you want soft light on the face and hard light on the body. So it is, the, by nature of the physics of it like being smaller, it is a little bit harder of a light because smaller lights are gonna be a little bit harder than your bigger, softer fixtures. Um, but what I will say though, is that the fact that there's two diffusion plates on it, it kind of cuts that down a bunch. So it's not super harsh light. For example, like there's a Blender Ego, like right, sorry, Blender XL, like right there beside me, but it's not harsh off my shoulder. It's just lighting up this side, it's, it's it's just lighting up, sorry. It's just lighting up this side, which separates things from the background. So in the first interview setup, you notice that it does give you a little bit of illumination, but it's not overpowering compared to something like your key light in the Blender Ego. Perfect, and then why would we use different temperature lights? What's the benefit to that? Can you explain that a little bit more? Sure, uh, so if you wanna create color contrast, that's where you can use different temperatures. So if you look at a color wheel, 
a lot of your bluer colors like your turquoise and your blues are on the opposites of like reds and oranges so if you want to create a little bit of drama or you want to make a shot look a little bit more interesting if you can do it in a really cool way you could actually use those two different colors now these aren't rgb lights they're more either you're going to go cooler or you're going to go warmer but those two colors contrast each other so if you want to make one side of an image warmer while the other one's a little bit cooler or even like neutral balanced then it gives you a little bit more dynamic dynamicism if that's a word uh, but it gives you a little bit more interest in creating some contrast in the images you're making awesome that is great to know so another question that just came in is would these lights still work for larger size product shots it depends on how large the product is like i always recommend having your key light being at least the size of the product that you have um, or you could just stack multiple lights around each other so if you have something like a much larger product then you would just have multiple egos or multiple blenders to give yourself that coverage as your key the reason why you want to do that is that you want to make sure that you have at least uh, a primary light that wraps around whatever your subject is right so and or it's going to be a little bit harsher not look that great so if i had this blender xl lighting my face as a key light unless i have a lot of ambient light this might not be enough to give me enough coverage so using something that's a little bit bigger or just using multiple lights beside each other will help you if you have a sizing issue in terms of your product versus the lighting setup you're using. Awesome. And then we just had another one roll in asking, what types of content creators should use these lights? What types of content do you recommend it for? So anybody that is, if you're a YouTuber and, you, and you're doing kind of your sit down talking head videos, this is great. Like, as you can see right here, that's a great key light. And if I'm in like just my house and I want to have just a little bit more professional looking images, then using something like this is great. Um, people that do product photography, product video, um, anything that's like, if you're doing anything with like products or people's faces with interviews, this setup works really, really well. Um, if you're someone that's getting into filmmaking and cinematography, these are great too, to have a couple of these lights in your kit, especially to get in those run and gun, those tighter situations where you don't have time to set up a big COB light with a gigantic softbox on a big C stand. You just need something that you can grab and go. So I would say anybody that's doing small form type of video, like if you're making social content, reels, TikTok, uh, smaller form promotional videos and product photography works really well with this lighting setup. Awesome. And we actually have an audience member asking if you can show your lighting setup that's lighting you right now. Okay. <laughs> to us Give live. Me one <laughs> second. Uh, okay, hang on one second. So this right here is the ego right about there. So that's my light right about here. It's on that daylight balance and match outside. Um, the Sony only lets you shoot neutral profile, so you can't really see the window. And then you have right here, and that's the right right here. I don't know. I'm just pointing, I'm just pointing at this point. Uh, that is where my Blender XL is. Awesome. And that's what, well, hang on a second. Um, and that is, um, yeah, so those are the two lights that I use. Because I have a big window in my condo, uh, I actually will just use these two and then just use that as my fill or my return. But in a situation where you might not have a big natural window like that, uh, you could use a third light to fill in some shadows like the other Blender XL in the first setup. I'm oh, freaking. that's so great. Thank you for showing us your setup there. That was nice. Uh, is there anything else that you want to share with everyone? Um, hang on one second. I'm really crooked here, and I want to make sure. Up oh, there, you go. Um, yeah, I would say a lot of cinematography, a lot of filmmaking in regards to lighting, start out with a lighting setup just like this, using two or three lights, using your ambient light, and finding the right fixtures that work for your workflow. So I don't think you should feel pressure to buy big gigantic setups, especially if you're not somebody that has the time or the resources to actually have those big setups. So using something like a smaller run and gun setup works perfectly in a lot of those scenarios. Now, a lot of you guys are gonna probably end up working with people or businesses or maybe doing stuff on YouTube. So you wanna find stuff that's going to give you the best amount of light with the smallest footprint and the least amount of effort. So something like a big softbox that covers your face or something to cover yourself from the background or when you're doing product stuff, making sure that you have the coverage that you need. Um, that's one of my big tips and not trying to overcomplicate it because a lot of cinematography, a lot of filmmaking, a lot of video in general, all has to do with that formula of, do I have a big light lighting the thing I need people to see? Can I separate it from the background so I can focus on it? 
And can I fill in the shadows where I don't want them? Yeah, that is interesting. Thank you, Kofi. So this has been great. I don't know. I have learned a bunch of new stuff today. So a uh, quick question, Kofi. If someone wants to contact you, what's the best way to do that? Sure. Uh, so there's my Instagram handle at kythecreative. Um, please don't pronounce it Kai. They're my initials. The Kofi Yaboa is my initials. Um, you're probably going to pronounce it Kai anyways, and that's fine. Um, or uh, you can follow me over on YouTube, and that's Kofi Yaboa, K-O-F-I space Y-E-B-O-A-H. Uh, I do a lot more in-depth reviews for gear, tutorials. Right now, I'm working with the Red Komodo and kind of going through its paces. Uh, and all next month is going to be all A7 IV filmmaking content. So that's something to be excited for as well. So if you guys are interested, you can go and check that out. Um, that's a pretty much the main two. I mean, if you want to send me an email, it's kythecreative at gmail.com. Uh, I'm not really sure what emails you need to send me, but if you do, you know, go for it. Um, but yeah, those are the big three. Well, oh, that was great. Thank you so much again to everyone who joined us today. And a special thank you to Kofi, as this was brought to you by Tiffin. A recording of the webinar will be posted on Tiffin's YouTube, so please feel free to check it out and share it. And thanks again to everyone for joining. Hope you guys learned a lot and had a great time. Thank you, guys.